Next, we come to pneumonia in children. Pneumonia is infection and inflammation of the lung parenchyma. And the pneumonia is the leading global killer of children. According to all the standard textbooks, pneumonia is the most common infectious cause of death in children less than 5 years of age. There is a definition of recurrent pneumonia given in Nelson that we need to know. Nelson defines recurrent pneumonia as two or more episodes of pneumonia in a single year or three or more episodes ever throughout lifetime with radiographic clearing between the occurrences. In the western world, they use x-ray also as a part of workup and part of diagnostic workup for pneumonia and that is why the definition given in Nelson talks about radiographic clearing between the episodes. In India, we follow the IMNCI guidelines where they say the diagnosis should be made clinically and there is no role of radiology in the patient. So, there is some discrepancy, but because of the paucity or the lack of a proper definition elsewhere, we stick to the same definition as Nelson uses. Now, coming to the causes of pneumonia, the causes can be divided age-wise. So, less than two months of age, pneumonia is a part of neonatal sepsis and so the same pathogens will be applicable here. So, most commonly it is caused by group B streptococcus, that is streptococcus A galactiae, followed by E. coli, followed by Klebsiella. When it comes to age 2 months to 5 years, it is the viral causes which become prominent. So, most common viral cause of pneumonia in children is respiratory syncytial virus. It causes not only bronchiolitis, it is also a common cause of pneumonia in children. And second common cause is a bacterial cause that is streptococcus pneumonia, also called as pneumococcus. And for the age group between 5 to 15 years, which includes the school going population also, you have the Mycoplasma pneumonia as the common pathogen, followed by Streptococcus pneumonia, that is pneumococcus, followed by a member of Chlamydia family known as Chlamydophila. So, this is the list which is given in Nelson also. And this particular thing is your previous year MCQ point as well. And then, uh, what are the common complications of pneumonia? There are three important complications we need to know. The first common complication is para pneumonic effusion. In fact, this is considered to be the most common complication. So, para pneumonic effusion means in the uh, pleural space, some degree of fluid accumulation will happen. This is not severe enough to cause any respiratory distress and uh, it can be detected sometimes on radiology that is x-ray or ultrasound, but it is a benign thing. It is a benign complication, very common, does not require specific therapy. It is reactive fluid basically. And so, when you treat the patient for pneumonia, the fluid also gets absorbed by itself. So, para pneumonic effusion is considered to be the most common complication of pneumonia. Secondly, uh, there can be empyma in the patient. Empyma refers to pus in the pleural cavity. Empyma is common in age less than 2 years and mostly it is caused by staph aureus as the offending pathogen. And third common complication will be pneumatoseal. Pneumato means air, uh, seal means cyst. So, air filled cystic cavities will form in the lung parenchyma and they are typically produced by a patient who has staph aureus as a cause of pneumonia followed by a klebsiel. It can also occur in other conditions like kerosene poisoning. So, non-infectious pneumonias can also sometimes have pneumatoseal. Pneumatoseal is dangerous because it can progress to uh, sudden pneumothorax in the patient. So, these are the relatively common complications. Apart from that, pulmonary hemorrhage, bronchitis, lung abscess, uh, septic shock, they all can occur in a patient of pneumonia and some patients can progress to ERDS as well. Now, how do you make the IMNCI diagnosis of pneumonia? IMNCI is Integrated Management for Neonatal and Childhood Illness. These guidelines say for a child less than 5 years of age who is presenting to you with fever or respiratory symptom like cough, there is a clinical diagnosis that we do. We check for three things, fast breathing is there or not or chest indrawing is there or not and danger signs there or not. So, first of all, watch for fast breathing. Fast breathing is also known as tachypnea. How do you say tachypnea is there or not? There is a table you can remember. On one side we have age, other side we have respiratory rate. Less than two months of age, if the respiratory rate in child is equal to or more than 60 per minute, that is fast breathing or tachypnea. If age is 2 to 12 months, any respiratory rate equal to or more than 50 per minute is considered to be tachypnea and age between 1 to 5 years, any respiratory rate equal to or more than 40 per minute is considered to be tachypnea. Above 5 years of age, uh, fast breathing correlation or 
you know, uh, with pneumonia is not there and so we do not define it. Second, we watch for chest indrawing or chest retractions, use of accessory muscles of respiration. Remember, nasal flaring is not included as a feature of pneumonia. And third, we watch for general danger signs. There are four general danger signs that we watch for according to the latest IMNCA guideline. If you have read the older ones, you need to correct them. This is the latest IMNCA guideline I am discussing here. Four general danger signs are severe malnutrition. Second is convulsions. Third is inability to feed or drink. Inability to feed or drink. And fourth will be abnormally sleepy or difficult to awake. Abnormally sleepy or difficult to awake. Abnormally sleepy or difficult to awake is nothing but lethargy. Although the guidelines do not use the word lethargy, but if the MCQ examiner uses the word lethargy, it is considered to be a danger sign only. The lethargy is nothing but abnormally sleepy or difficult to awake. So, any child less than 5 years of age comes to you, he check if the child has fever or cough or not. If there is no fever, no cough, you will not think of pneumonia. Fever or cough, first thing, watch for fast breathing, watch for chest and drawing, watch for general danger sign and then make the diagnosis. It is a very useful uh, classification. The Western world people say that uh, there are problems with this classification because it over diagnoses pneumonia. But WHO as well as our Indian system agrees in pneumonia less than 5 years of age, pneumonia is the leading cause of death. And so, a bit of over diagnosis is always better rather than missing out the patient. That is the rationale behind having these guidelines. And the chances of pneumonia directly correlate with fast breathing and chest and drawing intubation. Okay. So, three things we do uh, fever or cough less than 5 years of age. Watch for fast breathing, watch for chest injury, watch for general danger sign and then make the diagnosis. Now, how do you make the diagnosis of pneumonia according to MNCI? Look at this table. So, if there is no fast breathing, no chest injury and no danger sign, you will say the child is having no pneumonia. It is only cough and cold. And there is also a color coding which is given. So, you will use a green code. No pneumonia means no need to follow up, send the child home. In no pneumonia, there is no rule of antibiotic. So, no antibiotic should be given in the patient and only supportive therapy is needed. Supportive therapy means fever control by paracetamol or acetaminophen and if the patient is having wheezing like symptoms, you can give nebulized short acting beta agonist but no antibiotic need to be given. If there is fast breathing or chest in drawing but no danger sign, you will say the patient is having pneumonia. The color coding used in pneumonia is yellow code. Here you will be using antibiotics, so you will use oral antibiotic. What is the oral antibiotic you will be using? The drug of choice is amoxicillin. And amoxicillin needs to be given for a duration of 5 days. But any patient started on oral antibiotics, one review is mandatory according to these guidelines. Review the patient in 2 days, that is 48 hours and see if the patient is improving or not. And then if the patient is having any general danger sign or SP2 less than 90%, or strider at rest that is in a calm child, you say the patient is having severe pneumonia. Severe pneumonia is also known as very severe disease. Important thing to understand, there is no such category as very severe pneumonia. Severe pneumonia is called as very severe disease. What is the color coding done? Pink code is given and these patients you will give first dose of antibiotic and refer to higher center. If you are already sitting in a higher center, you will not refer, you will admit the patient. What is the preferred I antibiotic? It is IV antibiotic which is preferred. We use a combination of ampicillin along with gentamicin. And when you are referring in these patients, always refer on oxygen. Always refer on oxygen. So, this is how we make the diagnosis of pneumonia. You do get clinical cases where they make a case scenario. Uh, 5 month old child having respiratory disease, fever, cough, etc. Also having chest retraction or not having chest retraction and then sometimes danger sign will be present, sometimes it will not be present and they will ask you what is the diagnosis or they will ask you what next needs to be done. This table will tell you what next needs to be done. Already one IMNCI based question has been asked in the exam and this table will be useful for your college level exams also. So, this finishes our diagnosis of pneumonia. Remember, Pneumonia is a topic in details we have already done in the regular video, but this particular thing you can add to your existing information. Thank you so much.